Water is also known as the universal solvent. And the reason for this is because it dissolves many, many different types of compounds. And so when we're making a solution, which happens when compounds dissolve in water, in other things also, but we're looking specifically at water here. They, when compounds dissolve, they make homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So whatever we're dissolving and the stuff that is doing the dissolving. What we call the stuff that is dissolved is the sol solute. So solute is the smaller quantity and it's the stuff that is changing state and being dissolved into the solvent. Solvent is in the larger quantity and it is the main component in the solution. Solvents, what is doing the dissolving. So water is considered the universal solvent because of the fact that it can dissolve many different types of substances. So it can dissolve covalent substances like sugar. It can dissolve ionic substances like salt or calcium chloride. It can dissolve acids like hydrochloric, making hydrochloric acid. And so we call it the universal solvent. When we make a mixture, we need to have a way to tell how much solute is dissolved into our solvent or our solution. And so we use something called concentrations that puts a numerical value on the quantity because we can have dilute solutions, we can have concentrated solutions. Concentrated contain a lot more solute than dilute solutions. There's several different ways that we can measure concentration. So we can measure it as parts per million, which is frequently abbreviated PPM. We can measure it as parts per billion, which is abbreviated PPB. And both of these are the grams of the solute divided by the grams of the solvent. And then we multiply by the appropriate value. So if it's parts per million, we multiply by a million times 10 to the sixth. If it's parts per billion, we multiply by a billion, which is 10 to the ninth. Percent mass follows the exact same idea, mass of the solute over mass of the solvent. And it could be grams, it could be kilograms, but those units have to be the same um, for the numerator and the denominator. Because it's a percent, we multiply by 100, and the units that we use are the percent sign. If we're doing a percent volume, we have to have volume of solute over volume of solvent times 100 to put it into a percentage. Grams per milliliter, it's grams of solute over milliliters of solvent, and our units are grams per milliliter. The other concentration that gets used is called molarity. And molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. So now instead of solvent, we're talking about the solution. And this one is abbreviated with a capital M for molarity. We'll talk about how to calculate that in just a minute. It is really key that you have, to, that you have the proper units for the value that we're trying to calculate. So that table that was on the last slide, it is going to be uh, important that you keep that handy so that you can look and see what units are needed depending on which concentration you're asked to calculate. Another handy fact that is important to remember is that the density of water is about one gram per one milliliter. And this allows you to convert between the mass of solvent and the volume of solvent pretty easily. Let's do some calculations with these different concentrations. So given the information that we have 250 
milliliters of water. We want to calculate the concentration, so we're going to convert from milliliters of water into grams of water using that density. And because the density of water is 1, that means that we have 250 grams of water. All right, so let's calculate the parts per million. So remember, parts per million is equal to grams of solute. In this case, it's going to be copper divided by the grams of solvent which in this case is water, times a million, which we can represent as 10 to the sixth. So our grams of solute is 0 0.055 grams of copper divided by 250 grams of water times a million, which is 10 to the sixth power. If we do that calculation, we end up with 220 parts per million. If we want to find parts per billion, same idea, grams of solute over grams of solvent. But now we're multiplying by a billion, or 10 to the ninth. So we put the grams of our solute, which is copper, divided by 250 grams of water times 10 to the ninth. So we get 220,000 parts per billion, or PPB. Now you'll notice that because Parts per billion are a thousand times larger. Our answer is a thousand times larger for parts per billion. All right, so let's do percent by mass of grams of solute divided by grams of solvent times 100 to put it into a percentage. So you'll notice that we're setting many of these up to start very similarly. We're just multiplying by a different value uh, to depending on what our units are. So times 100 because it's a percentage, and we get 0.022% copper. All right, how about grams per milliliter? So now we're going to do grams of our solute divided by milliliters of our solute solvent and so we take 0 0.055 grams of copper divided by 250 milliliters of water we don't multiply by anything in this case we get 2.2 times 10 to the negative fourth grams per milliliter. If we want to calculate molarity, we need to convert the grams of our sample into moles. And the way that we do this is we calculate the molar mass. And we've already looked at this Back in chapter six, we have to use the periodic table 
the masses off of the periodic table in order to calculate our moles. So if we have five grams of sodium bromide, we have to calculate the moles of sodium bromide. So we're gonna start with sodium and we look at the periodic table. It's 23 grams per mole. Look at bromide. It is 80 grams per mole. And if we add those two together, we end up with 103 grams per mole for sodium bromide. We take five grams. We want our grams to cancel. So the 103 goes on the bottom with the grams. One mole goes on top. We end up with 0 0.05 moles of sodium bromide. Now if we want to find the molarity, it's going to be moles over liters, moles of solute over liters of solution. So we're going to take our 0 0.05 moles, divide by the liters of solution. So we have 500 milliliters. There's a thousand milliliters in a liter, or we have to move the decimal place three places to the left. And so we have 0.5 liters. So our solution concentration is 0.1 molar. So molarity gets shortened up to molar, 0.1 molar. Here's a practice for you. See if you can calculate percent by mass, grams per milliliter, and molarity. Pause the video, try your calculations. When you're ready, start the video again. We have 600 milliliters of water. And so because our density is one gram per mole, that is equal to 600 grams of water. If we're gonna do percent by mass, that is equal to grams of solute, in this case, magnesium chloride, divided by grams of solvent, times 100 to put it into a percentage. So 7.5 grams of magnesium chloride divided by 600 grams of water times 100% gives us 1.25%. Grams per milliliter 7.5 grams, so grams per milliliter, before we get into numbers, it's grams of solute over milliliters of solvent. So 7.5 grams magnesium chloride, 600 milliliters of water and we get point zero point zero one two five grams per milliliter. Molarity. Again we are going to have to calculate our moles. So if we're going to look on the periodic table. Magnesium 24 grams per mole. Chloride is 35.5 grams per mole. But we have two of them. 
So that means we have to multiply this number times 2. Add those two values together. We end up with 95 grams per mole for our magnesium chloride. So molarity is moles over liters. We have to calculate our moles yet. So we have 7.5 grams. We want the grams to cancel. 95 grams goes on the bottom. One mole on top. 0 0.008 moles. Divide by the liters of the solution which is, we have milliliters to convert to liters. We have to move our decimal place three places to the right. So we get 0.6 liters of solution, which gives us a molarity of 0.13 molar for our molarity.